I call Gareth Hughes. Uh, kia ora, Mr Speaker. Nā mihi nui. Kia koutou. Kia ora. I rise to support the bill. I'd like to congratulate the member Chris Bishop for having a, another bill uh, pulled from the ballot. Look, we'll be supporting it. It's a minor bill. It's dealing with an issue, a problem, which has happened all of one times in history. Mr Speaker, it's quite phenomenal when you think there are 70,000 kids in New Zealand or young New Zealanders out of work, out of training, 40,000 people sleeping in cars and garages, unswimmable rivers, pollution going through the roof, systemic economic problems. The issue to deal with is an issue that's happened once. Look, it's a, it's a real issue. It's a minor issue. We'll be supporting it because it is a real issue. But let's focus on the real important issues well, we let's to New Zealand. Well, let's focus on this bill. So on this bill, Mr Speaker, which you've got to say is better than an airport luggage bill, this bill deals with this minor uh, quirk which happened. And Mr Speaker, I was one of many New Zealanders who was outraged at the decision which resulted uh, in Ted Dawes' book, the award-winning Into the River, seeing a temporary ban. I remember standing outside Unity Books in Wellington with a whole bunch of noted authors and publishers. We all had books covered in brown paper bags to symbolise how ridiculous it was in 2016 to see a book literally taken out of public circulation. Kids in libraries couldn't access it. Now, the amazing uh, foot and mouth Barbara Streisand effect result of all this negative publicity is more people bought the book more people read the book. I think it's great to see that freedom of expression that Kiwis wanted to get some of the forbidden fruit that the office had decided they couldn't access through their libraries, etc. So look, it, 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 was, it was a real issue, a minor issue, and we support the intent of the member to address it. Though it does raise some bigger issues. This gives the office a greater sense of flexibility, which the Green Party supports wholeheartedly. It'll be interesting to hear the arguments and the experts in the select committee. But I've noted, quite particularly in the last couple of years, we're seeing a much more proactive and publicity-seeking chief censor in New Zealand. This is uh, someone who traditionally you don't hear a great deal of, but we have seen a lot of the chief censor over the last couple of years. Now, one of the issues the chief censor has really picked up on, which isn't contained in this bill, is how we treat uh, books, literature and games. So one thing the Chief Censor wants to do to New Zealand is require all the video games, and look, we import uh, 162 million, or we consume $162 million worth of computer games in New Zealand, according to the last data in 2013. The Chief Censor wants to apply a classification regime across those thousands of video games which are consumed in New Zealand. Now, the irony, of course, is because of the creaking old-fashioned approach we have, this would be an incredibly expensive proposition on the order of $1,400 to $2,000 a game. Now, at a time when we've got hundreds of Kiwis coming up with great ideas and selling them on platforms like Steam or the iTunes shop, uh, often this means the difference between that game being available in New Zealand or not if the Chief Censor got his way. When I was recently in Australia at the largest uh, Southern Hemisphere video game exhibition supporting about 10 New Zealand companies who were exporting into the Australian and the global market, doing great work as part of the 92 million in exports our video game and interactive media industry earns New Zealand each year. Uh, what they told me is in Australia they've got a system called the International Age Rating uh, coalition. This is a voluntary body where game developers can submit their game to a voluntary self-classification body. It uses the power of the cloud and participants to give it a rating. Now the costs are almost minuscule. What they've seen in Australia is hundreds of thousands of games now get a classification instead of the previously maybe two or three hundred a year which got a classification. Now, I've got a message to the member if he wants to focus on some of the bigger issues facing the sector uh, and to the Chief Censor. Maybe this is an area where New Zealand should be looking as well. I want to touch on the, the sentiment of Claire Curran. What we've seen from the Broadcasting Communications Minister is this uh, process, the Broadcasting Convergence Review. Years and years have gone into it. Screeds and screeds and papers and papers have gone into it. What did we get out of it? A potential ban for some Sundays sorry, a potential release of the advertising ban on Sundays. That's the result. We're seeing giant media corporations merging in New Zealand, real threats to net neutrality if the Sky uh, Vodafone merger goes ahead, in my opinion. Uh, Mr Speaker, there are ginormous issues coming from new technology, but if the government wants to focus on these minor technical issues, albeit for them, we're going to focus on the big issues facing New Zealand.